Good day. We're going to look at question 3 of November 2013, which is the free fall or the projectile motion. So let's start with our question. A ball with a mass of 0 0,15 kilos is thrown vertically downward from the top of a building. So there we are given some uh, direction to the concrete floor below. The ball bounces off the floor. The velocity versus time graph below shows the motion of the ball. It's very important that when you get a graph to look at what type of graph you are working with. So we have a velocity time graph. So we are at looking at how the velocity changes. And they also tell us we have the bounce. So if you can remember, this dotted line will show us the bounce of the ball because in a very short time the velocity of the ball will change. So I have a building, I have a ball that's going to be thrown downward and the moment it hits the ground it's going to bounce. Right, so that there will be two motions, one downward and the upward bouncing part. Then they also tell us that downward is going to be taken as positive. So you will see that the velocity at the top of my graph is in the positive direction, which will now indicate the downward motion. So let us see now what questions we are asked about this graph. So first of all, from the graph, write down the magnitude of the velocity at which the ball bounces off the floor. So let us examine this graph. The initial velocity is 10, so it means that will be the velocity with which it is thrown. Then there it will hit the ground 20. But this will be the indication of the velocity of the ball when it leaves the ground. So now the question says magnitude. So we won't use the negative because the negative refers to direction. We will only say 15 meters per second. Okay, next question. Is the collision of the ball elastic or inelastic? Right and refer to the graph to explain your answer. So first of all, before you attempt to answer, what is the difference between elastic and inelastic? So in ela uh, elastic collision will be a collision where the kinetic energy remains the same. And for kinetic energy of mv squared to remain the same, the velocity before and after the collision need to be the same. So if we now go back to our graph, we will see that the velocity hitting the floor and bouncing off the floor are not the same. So it cannot be an elastic collision, it has to be an inelastic collision. And our explanation will be, it hits the floor at 20 meters per second, it leaves the floor at 15 meters per second, kinetic energy, is not the same. Right, now we have a calculation or two. First of all, the height from which the ball is thrown. So firstly, what is the symbol for height? And then what other information do I have from my graph? So let's go back to our graph. We have initial velocity, 10. We have final velocity, 20. Because now they're asking the height from which it is thrown. There it is thrown, there it hits the ground. So delta y is the one I want to calculate. And then of course I also have g. Now, important, direction because velocity and acceleration are vectors. But all of these going down, still downward to the floor, and G downward. So we are going to use positive as down, and all of them are down. So let's do our calculation. Oh, yeah. 
before we can do that, let's quickly just look at our information sheet. There we go. We are looking for BI, BF, Delta Y and G. And the formula in which all of them are will be this one. Good. So it will be BI. Ah, uh, no. BF square is BI square plus 2A delta Y. Substitute final velocity 20, initial velocity 10, 2 times 9,8. Delta Y is the one I'm looking for. So we'll have 400. 10 square is 100 minus 100 divided by the 2 times 9,8. That will give me delta Y. So delta Y equals 15,31 meters. And you will see it's a positive value. It just, again, indicates we are going downward. Right. Next question. The magnitude of the impulse imparted by the floor on the ball. So, impulse. Let's look at our information sheet. If we want to get impulse, you must know that impulse is the force that acts for a certain time. So we've got force and time, and there is your force and time. So we're going to look for change in momentum. And change in momentum is mass times velocity, the final momentum minus the initial momentum. And what is important here is that you must remember that impulse equals F net delta T together is known as impulse. And F net delta T is equal to change in momentum. So we'll have MVF minus MVI. Now, it is of the floor on the ball. So I have the ball hitting the floor at 20 meters per second, leaving the floor at minus 15. Now I want to get the impulse, so I want to work out the change in momentum. All right, can you see important positive, negative, final, initial. So we'll have 0, 0,15 multiplied by the minus 15 minus 0, 0,15 times 20. And that will get you 5,25 Newton seconds. Okay, let's just quickly look at our question again. Magnitude of the impulse. So again, we do not have to leave the negative there. We don't even have to interpret the negative. It's the floor on the ball. It's upward. But in this case, we only get to answer 5,25 Newton seconds because they are asking me the magnitude. All right. Next one, the magnitude of the displacement of the ball from the moment it is thrown until time t until time t. So let's look at our graph one more time. So from the moment it is thrown, we already know how far it went. It went from the top to the bottom, 15,31, and now it's going up to time t. But we also know that when the velocity is zero, it's at its maximum height for that part of the motion. So, and if we look at displacement, and now this is where you sometimes go wrong, because displacement is the change in position. So from where it started to where it ended, we are actually looking for that part. So we'll have the positive, and because this is up, we'll get a negative answer, add the two together to give us that change in momentum, ah, change in displacement. All right. So, first of all, we need to calculate, we already have that part, so we'll have to calculate delta y for this part, and 
then just add them together. So I've got an initial velocity and my final velocity will be zero. So we are again going to do the same formula as before, Vf squared, Vi squared plus 2a delta y. But now my final velocity is zero and my initial velocity is the minus 15, that velocity with which the ball leaves the um, floor plus 2 times positive 9,8. There it's going upward. 9,8 is downward. We're going to get the displacement. Now see, that will bring us to... Um, 2, 2, 5. 15 squared, negative, going over. Divide by my 2,98. That will give me delta y. That brings me to delta y is negative 11,48. And now we'll have our total displacement will be equal to the initial 15,3 minus the 11,48. And I will be left with 3,82 meters. And because it's positive, it is downward. Remember, it goes from the top to the bottom and up, but the displacement is from the start to the end. So that is your delta y. That's why it is positive. All right. And then we have to sketch a position versus time graph for the motion of the ball from the moment it is thrown until it reaches the maximum height after the bounce and use the floor as the zero position. And we have to indicate the height from which the ball is thrown and the time t. All right. Now, because downward is positive, so let's just look. Position time graph. So it's a delta y time graph. And this will be the zero position, it is the floor. So it starts from a certain height, which was that 13, oh, 15,3. This graph can never be a straight line. The um, gradient needs to uh, increase or decrease because it's going faster. And then, of course, it goes up again. But these two cannot be at the same height. Right. And there will be your time where velocity is zero. And that was question three.